Hello and welcome to Healthy Knitting. My name is Rosie and you can find me on Ravelry as L-E-S-P-E-T-I-S-L-U-X-E-S -E -E and we also have a Ravelry group there. Um, I am a little bit rushed today. I had my window done today. Um, it needed to be fixed because I had broken it and they were supposed to be here at 9 o'clock this morning and 10 o'clock I get just before 10 I get a call oh well we'll be here we're just leaving now well it was after 11 by the time they got here they've just left but I now need to do everything that I couldn't do <laughs> I need to go to the post office and mail out a package and that is why I'm actually recording before I go because I have something to show you so I didn't even make notes I was going to do this the other day and I threw out my back which has not been completely fun <laughs> um, if you've ever thrown out your back before, it hurts really, really bad, and I couldn't even get out of bed. It was it was pretty sad. I had to call my neighbor to come help me. Um, anyway, I am not prepared. I don't even have any notes, no notes in my hands. So we're winging it completely, and I'm going to have to see if I can add a tip on or maybe make a separate entry because if you've been watching me, you know that I still have troubles with iMovie. I can't make anything go over the top like everybody else does. I can't even add something new. I add it and it goes right on the bottom of a voiceover. Eventually I'll probably figure it all out and then they'll change it again. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, new and good, the window's finished, yay. Uh, that's been a thorn in my side for three years now to have a big gash in my window. Um, I just you know, sometimes you let things go. <laughs> Looks so good in there now. You can actually see out the window. Fantastic. And adds a little bit more light and it looks a lot better. I don't look like I live in a trashy house now. Um, what else is new and good? Um, I saw my cousins at the party. I think it was right after I recorded I was doing that. And that was super fun. And, and I saw more of my family, my aunts and uncles. And, um cousins that I haven't seen in 20 years their children are grown and I've never met them and it's it's just so amazing to reconnect with your family again I'm having a great time I'll be seeing them at um, Christmas as well so that'll be really nice um, what else is new and good geez so much but I didn't write anything down and um, I know there was stuff I was going to forget to tell you last time and I did and now I've already forgotten what it was I was going to tell you I need to write things down. I really do. Oh, Natalia's here to say hello. Hang on. Here's Natalia. Hello. Um, she was very mad at me just now because, get out of there. Um, I had to lock them all up in the bedroom because last time the guys came, they actually came already to do the window, but they had the wrong size. And she jumped out and I don't want her out, especially not in the middle of the winter. It's cold here. I'll show you some snow. Snow. Uh, we're in New York, upstate New York, so uh, it's uh, it's pretty cold and snowy. Why don't we just let me show you some knitting things and whatever whatever comes to my mind, I'm just gonna have to tell you. <laughs> uh, I have finished some things, but oops, I promised I wasn't going to make noises in your ears anymore either. So let me. This is a dress for my niece. This is the front. Isn't this cute? And this is the back. The only difference in the back is that I didn't do three of those. I wound up just doing regular stocking that because I didn't read the directions properly. <laughs> I had a hard time with this little dress because it's modified completely from uh, the size that it called for in the pattern. This is the, the dress in the pattern by Harpa, and that's as much as I'm going to say because I can't pronounce this woman's last name to save my life. Oh, we're doing more glare here, are we? There we go. And that's, but, oh, that's Natalia. Oh, she's going to knock everything over. So that's a little dress. My niece is going to be four on Boxing Day, so I made it a little bit extra stretchy in the waist, and uh, I think the arm hole's long enough. I don't know. I don't have children. It's really hard. I just kind of, like, kept putting it as to where I thought she stood when I was making it. So I'm hoping it will fit. 
I didn't get the wings done, although a friend of mine from knitting has come up with some great ideas and, you know, I just need to get this in the mail today. Um, maybe later I can get the wings done. Anyway, um, yeah, I didn't realize when you bought your, my nephew, because I just called his dad, her dad <laughs> this morning to get a different address to mail it to so that they'll actually have it for Christmas. Um, I didn't know that when you purchased your uh, labels on USPS website that it was cheaper than actually getting in the store, post office. So anyway, I did that, um, and hopefully that it said it should get to them by the 23rd, so that's Monday. Yay! <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm always last minute. It's crazy. So the next thing I finished, well, let me show you. Ah, I'm going to stand up because um, you can't see the bottom of it. I finished, this is the Noro, that little jacket, and I, I don't have the book with me right now, but it's the one with Jenny Watson, and I did the sleeves. And if you remember, I did the sleeves, and then they were too small. So I re-knit them, and they were still too small. And I'm like, okay, maybe I did do them right, and it was just too small. So I knit the large size sleeve, and the, that fit, and it actually went in. So I may have done something different with my armhole and made my armhole longer than what the pattern called for. I might have done that, and I just didn't remember because if it's a short armhole, I know I, I need a longer armhole. So usually I'll just adjust to fit my size, and that's probably, maybe that's why it didn't work. So I had a little bit of yarn left over and I decided, oh shoot, okay, hang on. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, let me not talk about this for a second because I didn't pull up these and I don't know the names of them. So I did two other projects. Um, I'm going to show you something I swatched. Has anybody watched The Fiber Factor? Um, it's with... Cassell does it and uh, Cerulea Rose is on it and a few other people and then they have guest judging and it's just about over. I think the last thing they're doing now is the finale with four designers and they have to come up with X amount of looks. I think it's three looks. I don't remember. Uh, anyway, I kind of fell in love with the Bravura. It's a jacket slash cape slash outerwear coat type deal. And I'll show you a picture. It's by Tracy um, GP. And I did really like her designs on the thing. I was glad she's she's one of the finalists. I'm trying to get it so that the glare's not around it. And you really can't see it that well here. But I still need to buy the pattern, but I wound up buying the yarn. I got the yarn at Webb's. I had to wait a while because every time I went to go buy it, it was not there. And then uh, it finally... I did buy it anyway because it, it said it was there <laughs> but it really wasn't there and I had to wait and it just came the other day so I've done a gauge swatch and I'm on gauge which is pretty surprising because normally I have to go down a needle size so it's actually working on size 10s so the yarn I don't know they all said they love this yarn it's not the most softest yarn in the world it's um, Kenzie yarn and the colorway is I don't know because it's not written on here <laughs> it's a thousand it's the one that they actually did the pattern out of I liked it I didn't want to change anything and so um, actually thought it was a little bit creamier than what it's looking like in person but that's okay it'll still work it's very neutral uh, it's 50% New Zealand Merino, 25% Nylon, 10% Angora, 10% Alpaca, and 5% Silk Noil. So a lot of different things are going on, but I kind of figured it would be softer. Maybe after it's been washed, it'll be softer. I didn't wash my gauge swatch, so that is something else I still need to do because I'm not sure how this yarn is going to behave, but pre that, I'm getting gauge both stitch-wise and row-wise. So that's that. Um, okay. So let me see if I can find very quickly my projects because I've made two. Um, I made a seed stitch cowl that's called One Night One Skein Seed Stitch by Diana Levine. 
and I will show you her page. Super easy cowl right there. Oh, and now I'm getting more glare. There we go. I'm sorry, guys. I should probably move, but uh, got a little time. Um, so I made the cowl, and I made this with the hand spun that you saw not too long ago, the one that I made uh, with the Cormo and the Alpaca Blend. I'm not going to put it on. It fits. All right, I'll put it on. I just, my hair is really crazy today. Because it's so dry, it's all staticky, and then I just put oil in it, and so now it's all really weird and flat. So it could have been a hat day today. <laughs> but here's a cowl, and it can come up and keep you warm. It can go over and keep me warm that way. It doesn't actually go all the way down to the back, but if you're wearing something that's big like, oh, that looks crazy. <laughs> um, where you just need a really quick something over your ears, it'll work. Anyway, all right, so that's that. I enjoyed it very much, and I used the, I don't even know what needles I used, and I feel bad because now everybody's, uh, 10 and a half, size 10 and a half. And I used all of the yarn there isn't any yarn left and I really love it. It's so soft and squishy. It was really fun to actually make the hands, oh, get the hand spun, um, spun and then knitted right away instead of sitting over there in the big pile of uh, stash. So I had some more Nora left over because if you remember I bought seven skeins of this thinking that I was going to make long sleeves. This actually used five um, skeins of yarn without the long sleeves. It, I'm not even sure what happened because remember I had that other one that I was knitting and it's very similar in color but some's a little bit different and then it looked like I had misplaced some yarn somewhere but then I weighed everything, all the garments together and it said I had the right amount so I don't know what happened but anyway I made this cowl and this actually goes over your shoulders. Let's see if I can put it on. I like it. It's probably not the most convenient thing to wear because you can't put a handbag on and then as soon as you raise your arms it's going to be um, it's going to come down. But I thought it was very interesting. All right. I hurt my hand the other day so <laughs> I had to scrape the, the ice off the roof. I had ice damming and um, I actually had to take a hammer and just hammer it all and so now my wrist is very very sore. So here's the little cowl. Comes down like that. Oops, this side. I think it's not down in the back. Hang on. Okay. So it's kind of cute. Um, let me tell you the name of it. I N O U I, and that is by. <laughs> What's with all the names today that I can't pronounce? Um, maybe she's French. I don't know. Cleona? Cleone? And hers is very nice. It's in white. I think that they use bulky. No, it does call for super bulky. This was bulky though, so I, um, I think I used different needles. They use 17, and I use... Uh, size 10 and a half again. And it's cute. I mean, it can still fit under something else if, or, I guess, I don't know. I haven't really worn it yet. I just made it the other day, last week. Oh, a long time ago, right after I recorded last time. It feels like I, um, like I recorded just recently, but I know I didn't. And I've been trying to get this done, but then with throwing out my back, I couldn't really do anything. It was pretty, pretty sad. I couldn't even knit. I couldn't move. It wasn't fun. Um, okay, so I did also try to, <laughs> I tried to make another garment and I was using um, the Queensland, I was just looking for it, just like, where is the name of it? The Queensland, Cotlin, <laughs> Queensland Katmandu Chunky. Well, I don't think that's really a very chunky yarn. I couldn't get the gauge for chunky with that pattern and then I tried to adjust it, and oh, I have another project. Darn, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you that next week. I'll tell you about it though. Um, so I used an adjusted 
measurement for what gauge I got and cast on and I got about this much done and I wrapped it around because it's um, a coat and this coat's for probably going to really have to wait now because I don't have yarn in my stash for it and um, it's the Global Coat Cape. I think I showed you this last time that I was going to make this. The Global Coat. Well, it was like this big around. <laughs> so I had to rip that all out. Oh, I, oh my God, knitting disasters galore. So don't listen, that's a cat. Oh, I'm gonna talk real loud so you don't hear it. Um, anyway. So I had to, I just decided to frog that and uh, use different yarn. It uses, it calls for bulky. That was bulky yarn, but I definitely couldn't get the gauge on it and I just wasn't going to work. So then I started the $5 in Paris um, by Anna Peck and Melozweski. That one I can probably say, Melozweski. And it looks like, like that. It's just a striped top-down raglan. And I am using these two colors. This is Ella Ray Heathers. Um, again, it's not the right yarn. <laughs> Wait for the pattern. So the whole time I'm like, I don't even know how their pattern worked. I was checking to see the gauge and the amount of stitches because I'm trying to adjust and there really is no schematic and so I'm just counting all the stitches and I'm like how does this fit anybody? Nobody has said anything about this that I could see. So I'm wondering is it just me? It could be. I asked my friend in knit at knitting the other night and um, she came to the same conclusion that I did that something wasn't quite right but I started anyway. I'm making the medium and I'm just going to see what happens, but I don't have, I need to put it on um, another waist so that I can pull it down to see where I'm at. And maybe with, maybe it'll work. It might just have to be another project that's going to get totally ripped out. I don't know. Slow going these days. Um, so yeah, I went to knitting. I knit, what did I do? I knit, oh my God, <laughs> this is part of my knitting disaster. I cast on, it's in, it's in a circle. And I was very careful to not do the first round with um, twisting the stitches. And the next round I went around, I wound up twisting it. And so I had to back out all those stitches. And so I left it and I worked on my socks for a little bit, but um, it's not even much enough to show you. This cowl, when I was cutting the ends, I actually cut the working yarn. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't as bad as I thought though. I kind of just wove in another piece as if I was darning and then took the other side and wove it into. It's somewhere in here. You might not. Oh, here it is. This is it right here. I think this is it. I'm pretty sure that that's what happened there. Um, I was pretty surprised I did that. <laughs> you would think that I would learn, but you know. It just looked like it could get cut there and it really couldn't. So that's all I had to show you for knitting. For spinning, I have to move because I forgot. I finished this. I don't remember if I showed this to you last time. And I didn't do show notes last time, I'm sorry. Things have been a little bit crazy. But this is the other Cormo blend, Cormo Alpaca blend. And it bloomed up nicely. It's super soft. It's very springy. And I don't know exactly how much yards I have because I didn't measure it. And um, I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'm not sure. I would like it to be something, though, quickly. I have so much stuff to knit. It's ridiculous. I also put on the need put on the needles, put on the wheel, something that I wasn't very fond of. So I haven't been spinning. That was... You know, I want to spin and have fun, not spin and be miserable. And let me reach over here and grab it. Um, it's it's an Angora mix with um, Finger Lakes Woolen Mill, Angora, and wool. 
and it looks really great in the bag, but it's not really that great to spin. I don't know, can you see the little noily bits in there? See all those little noily bits? The little noily bits are annoying because if you're trying to make a smoother type yarn, it's just not going to happen. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something, but I might actually blend this in with something else and make like a total Tweety yarn. I'm not sure, but what I have going on right now, I'm not happy with. It's not fun to spin and sorry, if it's not fun, I'm just not going to do it right now. So the other spinning, ouch, sorry. Uh, I washed the Gotland fleece. It was four pounds, one and three eighth ounces um, before washing. And look at how pretty all those different colors are in there. That's so true to the colors. It's so beautiful. It was three pounds, three eighths ounces dried after washing. That is how much gunk was in here. The water was black. I think I washed it six times to get all of the junk out of it. Um, there's not any real veg matter in here, but the lanolin and the dirt, like was this sheep rolling around in dirt like a alpaca does? Because seriously, black. And to lose a whole pound. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of spoiled because the Shetlands, I'm not really losing that much um, on the weight after washing. And they're all downstairs. I'm, I'll show them to you as I do something with them. I just happen to have that out. I still have three more Shetland fleeces to wash, but there, those I also need to um, skirt because they all the other ones were skirted and this one wasn't skirted. Th those three weren't skirted. But the other ones came out beautiful and I love them muchly. They're very nice. I can't wait to figure out what to do with them. Uh, once I weigh them all out and um, separate the colors, I'll have a better idea of what I actually have to work with. Uh, new and good. Back to new and good. Uh, guess what I bought? Deluxe uh, blocking wire set. This is the ultra ultra fine lace wire blocking set, and this is the premium blocking wire set. If you buy the two, you actually get like five dollars off or something like that. And I think they had free shipping at the time when I purchased this, so I didn't need it for the the um, cotton dress. So I haven't used them yet. I just got them the other day. And now I want to make a shawl. And I do have a couple picked out. Um, with a, There's two yarns right over there that I really want to make a shawl with. And right now I just, it's not something I can contemplate. I really want to get the, because I want to, I want to get that jacket done, the one I told you about. And, um, I'm just going to use the Noro book from Jenny Watson as um, a guide, but I'm using Shirley Payton's step-by-step um, -step procedure how to design a garment to actually make this jacket. And I've been watching her her uh, class. I told you I bought it on Craftsy a little while ago, and I've been watching it before I go to bed. It's really good. I'm glad that I have that in addition to the book, and um, my book is still out on loan with a friend, but. Um, it's not like I needed it right now anyway, so it's not a problem, but, um, I think it makes it more, I, and I haven't really, I mean, I've looked through the book, I have the book, but unless you're actually doing a project, are you really going to be using all the stuff? So I am really glad that I have the video because it's nice to hear what she's saying and explaining things and to have it in both formats, um, is fine for me. So I'm very glad I have both formats. Um, that will be in the works soon because I really need to get that project done because it's cold out. <laughs> I could be wearing it today. It's really chilly. Um, which reminds me. So, and yeah, I just want to get these warm garments made so that I can wear them. We are going to talk a little bit about animals right now because I had, um, an email from PETA the other day and they had the Angora rabbits and... Actually, when I bought the mink yarn, I have it over there that I bought from Still Mill River, and they're like, oh, no animals were harmed during this process. I'm like, 
okay, but are they humanely raised? And it kind of posed that question in my mind, like, wow, you know, Angora, I wonder how they're raised, you know, they're caged animals. And I kind of prefer animals not to be in cages. When I had my cows, they were running around. They didn't get locked up. And if they were in a pen, they were in a pen, but their feet were on something that was solid and not on wires. And, you know, like they weren't being harmed being in the pen. They were actually safe and they had lots of room to run around. And so I really kind of want to make sure that what I buy is not hurting anything, which is the other reason why I buy organic cotton, because I don't really want to buy something that's not sustainable in my eyes with pesticides and water pollution and things like that. So it started me thinking about a lot of things. And then when I got that video, I was like, whoa, that really kind of put a very big visual in, in my eyes at that point. And I know you can pluck rabbits, but I don't think they look like that when they're completely plucked. So if anybody has any information about raising angora rabbits and what they look like when they're plucked versus like pretty much having all of their hair off, like, I don't know. Um, it didn't seem like that's what was supposed to happen. I, I mean, I've pulled mats off my cats. Some, one of them that was, was not grooming herself very well. She had long hair and um, there was still hair underneath though. So, oh, we're gonna go this way. <laughs> Sorry guys, my battery is going low and I um, hope you're not getting motion sick, but the plug-in is over here. So, ouch. So we're gonna finish up in here. Um, darn, I don't have anything to stick it on. <laughs> That's why I liked recording in there because I actually had some place to put it. So I'm just going to hold it for a minute. We're probably not going to be too, too terribly much longer. Anyway, um, where was I at? I was talking about um, the rabbits. And so I didn't think that, that when you would pluck an animal's hair for naturally being ready to molt, that all of the hair would come off. So I almost think that that's what's happening. And that would be very painful to have all of your hair pulled out I don't know if you can imagine that. So I don't want to purchase anything that's harming the animals. So I actually emailed, oh, I've got another thing to tell you about. So I emailed Noro because I've just recently bought all that yarn with the Angora in it. And they emailed me back right away this morning. And they said, Mr. Noro is very careful about the environment too, which I didn't know, which is why when you get little pieces of veg matter in your Noro, it's because their processing is so um, environmentally friendly that if you were to get all those things out, um, it's another process that's actually more harmful to the wool and more harmful to the environment. So he actually, I wish I had the page up. They told me to go to volume 26 from the Noro um, magazine. And there's an article in there. So I actually just looked it up on Wiki and it said all of their fibers are organic and he checks every single facility. He gets them from three different countries. I think it was New Zealand. Oh, all right. I'm not going to look it up right now because anyway, you can look up on Wiki if you want to. Um, so that made me feel really good. And so I emailed them back again. I'm like, does that include the cotton? Are they really talking about the cotton? Because then I would buy Noro with cotton in it. I've never bought it because I just assumed that it was, um, inorganic and, or inorganic, not organic. organic. Uh, I'm sorry. So why don't they put this on the label that they have organic fibers? I would so totally have bought even more Noro. I mean, like I would, I love Noro. So I'm a little bit prejudiced. I love the colors. It's nice that they're environmentally friendly. That's right up my alley. I mean, when we talk about healthy tips, we're not just talking about um, healthy for us. We're talking about healthy for everybody because really you have to be healthy for everyone. People who are drinking water else, elsewhere and um, it all goes around. So you can't just put yourself in a little vacuum. So, um, and you know, it's just something that's really important to me. So it's a shopping parameter for me. No, you know, or, or can't, and that's not organic. So, uh, you know, when they email me back, I'll let you guys know what they say, but that would be great because I wanted to try the, what is it? Tau sock or something like that. Um, 
there's a couple of um, patterns that I want to make and I would then buy the yarn to make them. So anyway, although I'm not buying any more yarn right now, I bought enough. Um, oh, so remember I told you about, I went to my little store, Nature's Pantry, and I said, hey, you know, if you have soy in something and canola oil in something and it doesn't say organic, it's a GMO product and I know you have see some on the bulk aisle, blah, blah, blah. And so actually when I was going through the store the other day, they're really, the store looks nice, but I may not be shopping there anymore. <laughs> Uh, and the reason is because I emailed them last night because when I went there yesterday, I read some ingredients and some things and they are using palm oil, palm kernel oil, which even if it says it's sustainable palm kernel oil, really, um, and I don't know if we talked about this because I meant to talk about this before. And then every time I close, I forget something, but palm kernel oil is grown in Indonesia and they're def doing mass deforestation just to plant this crop and it's ruining the homes of orangutans and they're killing them and they're displacing them and it's you know indonesia is such a little gem but they're not always taking care of their land the way that they should because maybe they don't realize that once it's gone it's gone i mean like what are you going to do um so i emailed them about that and i said oh by the way i talked to the manager about the soil oil and the canola oil. I told him what about, told them about my concern. And they emailed me back very quickly and said, we are not at this time considering not shelving these items without any thought whatsoever. So I emailed them back and um, they did ask for information to guide their customers. But I thought, why don't you just be the leader and, and not, I mean, in this right now, there are so many people who are calling for GMO labeling why not take a stand and go, you know, we are using blah, 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 so that you don't have this. Like, why not? Your, your name of your store is nature's pantry. And then to carry things that are, I mean, really palm kernel oil. There are so many other oils out there that are sustainable that you can use in a product. It's, it doesn't need to be that cheap. I mean, really that's why they're using it is because it's cheap. They're, you know, I, I'm not even going to get into it, but anyway, uh, cheap is not always better and then you're still they're charging a premium for it anyway so they're using because it it's cheap they're making a profit and you're buying something and you may not even know that it's harming anything because you may not be aware so if you're not aware look up palm kernel oil and deforestation and have a look-see for yourself uh, you don't need me to tell you but it's not a good situation um, I always read the labels and I make sure that as much as I can to stay informed of what, and it changes seems like from day to day, but what things are good and what things um, are harmful for either yourself or the environment. So I think in this day and age, we really need to not have a blind eye of what we buy and take it for granted that the people who are sourcing this stuff are sourcing in our best interest because a lot of times they're sourcing for profit. I don't know if there's anything I was going to tell you. Did you guys try ZipList? I really like it. I found a couple more um, uh, recipes, and it's just so easy to actually add it. Once you see a recipe on a page, you just click. I put it up in my little bar on top of my computer. Um, I click that open, and it saves the recipe. And I'm having my holiday party uh, for the Knit Group this Sunday, and I think I'm going to make something called Ginger ginger brownies but there's there's no um, flour in it it's made with coconut flour and coconut flour dates and some other stuff so I'll, I'll tell you how it comes out when I'm done um, if it's a bomb we're not having it and I'm going to make the the faux pear ice cream because I thought ginger brownies with pear ice cream would be really good. oh I'm sorry I'm like moving this all around um, I hope I'm not getting any of you sick. Normally we just sit, we sit still. I am so sorry, but if I put it down, you're gonna be looking at my nose. Um, sorry. Uh, la 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 la. What was I saying? Oh, so yeah, ginger brownies with faux pear ice cream sounded like it would go really well. And I have pomegranates, so I can put pomegranate seeds on top. I thought that'd be nice. Do you guys like pomegranates? I really. Ooh, I'm moving again. I really love them. I am going to cut this now because 
I'm already rambling and we're making a mess here and I'm going to get y'all sick and I don't want to do that before the holidays. I will probably put out another tip or something um, in a separate video for holiday tips. Um, it's just that right now I don't have anything ready and I'm sorry, but I have to get this done because I got to get that package out. So happy knitting everybody. I would put my hands together and do my normal thing and say thank you, but I'm holding the computer. So I'll talk to you later. Ciao.